my name is HW, and thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching Tone Junkie TV. That was me playing some middly, middly, middly rock stuff in the beginning there. Uncle Willie, that's some good rock tone. That's right. That is some good rock tone. And I want to talk about how to get good rock tone because um, we've got a couple different variations and you really have a lot of options, but there's some there's some uh, uh, some best practices here that I want people to hear and that I sort of built into these profiles. So the profile we were just playing there was a 68 Purple Plexi FMJ4. Now this is one of my favorite profiles from the whole pack, but it's one of the new profiles from the new 51 profiles we added to the pack. If you haven't upgraded yet, check out the last video on how to get those 51 new profiles because a lot of you have already purchased the Purple Plexi pack and you haven't even upgraded yet. I mean, about half of you have upgraded, but we still got to upgrade the other half of you. So right out of the gate, um, you will notice that I switched up some of the effects. In particular, I added this, this EQ that I'm calling Lead EQ, Rock Lead EQ we'll call it. And I'm, I'll add to the Tone Tools, give me a day or something, it'll be in the Tone Tools download. But you can see what I'm doing is in this profile. What I'm doing basically is I'm trying to actually get a brighter, cleaner, clearer tone. So the sound of this purple plexi is already really um, full and, and big. This is the full, the FM full, M meaning the greenback, the M magnet greenback, the, the 25 watt greenback here. So G12M. But we, and we're on the J channel. We're on the jumpered uh, 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 you know, position of that, of that Marshall. So the purple plexi just sounds thick and huge with this profile. So we want to go after a really singing rock sound. And one of the things we got to do before we add a bunch of mid-range, before we go slam it with a green scream or a Klon style boost in the front to get our real leady stuff out, what we want to do is make sure that we're not going to get too much frequency stack. So we maybe recorded the rhythm, and now we want a, diff a little bit different EQ on our guitar for the lead. So what I'm actually doing may seem a little counterintuitive, but let's start here with the X slot. I'm actually taking out this ultra low bass, the deeps. I'm taking out this bass. I'm taking out some fullness. You can see how I'm doing that here. 4.1, 1.1 uh, decibels, you know, drops. I'm even taking out some low mids. HW, mids are where the guitar's at. That's true, but we're going, kind of going for like, we want that rhythm guitar to stick out, you know? And uh, we, we, we don't want to get this frequency stack on it. So I'm actually cutting a little bit of this mid-range and adding some treble. And I'm doing that knowing that I'm about to add mid-range going in the front. So really quick, here's how this sounds without the X EQ and with the X EQ. <laughs> Thing, it may not be what you want, but actually it could be a useful rhythm EQ depending on how many guitars you're stacking. It's really just leaving the higher stuff and leaving a thinner version of that Marshall, which is neither good nor bad. It can fit in different situations. Now what I want to show you is um, that was with a rhythm. Now here, let's hear that lead sound with nothing in front of it because what we're going to do is add a green scream and we're going to add a green scream and an EQ that turns it into a clawney style thing. So before we do that, let's check out that X slot playing the lead all by itself. We could hear how it fits as a lead sound. Personally, for me, for my leads, 
I want a little more mid-range uh, and a little more nasally sounding thing. And again, this EQ isn't quite meant to be used by itself, although it certainly can be used by itself, but that's the sound that we've got before we talk about lead boosts. We're thinning out some of that low end so we get a real clear, meatily, meatily lead sound. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna put on this green screen. Now let me talk about this green screen for a second. I don't think we have this in the tone tools, but I'm gonna add it in. And this green screen, we're gonna call something like, uh, well, we'll just call it, uh, uh, you know, green boost or something. Because really all we're doing is using it like a boost. Check it out. I've got the drive at zero. Why would I do that with an overdrive? Well, we're just trying to take advantage of the green screen's EQ curve and the way it adds mid-range. Now, it still is actually adding a little bit of drive, but what I do is what I do here is I've got the tone pretty high, the drive at zero, I've got the mix at 65, because um, it is pretty powerful, and then I'm boosting two and a half decibels. So we're really just taking advantage of that EQ shift in the green scream effect in any kind of tube screamer style pedal, and then we're really trying to just push the front end a little more, and it makes the lead sound like this. some tone come on that's a good lead sound that's a very like 80s rock kind that's just green scream in front of a marshall man that's tube screamer into a marshall so if we defeat this now i'm going to come over here and i'm going to turn on my two clon effects now these two clon effects are available over here in tone tools clon one and clon two but i've switched something up let me go back to my profile we're back here we can see what we're uh, what we've got engaged here i'm actually using that same green screen so look Anytime you use the green screen, you can throw on this, what I call, what I call Clon 2, which is an EQ, and it sort of is creating some of the cuts that you get in a Clon. Uh, it makes it more reedy, more mid-rangey. It makes it more soundy like this. And I really like that, whereas it, it sounds a little more what I would call reedy as opposed to nasally, if that makes sense. Uh, green screams are nasally, but they're a little fat, you know, it's like a thick nasal thing. Whereas clons to me give a nice reedy quality that I like. It's almost like a stringed instrument, like a clarinet or a saxophone kind of thing. And I really dig that for lead stuff. So here is that clon. And listen, we didn't even have any delay on there or anything. We can make those sounds really sound like big, like an arena kind of thing, just so, with some shifts of the delay and reverb. We didn't even do any of that because I really want you to hear, just listen to the actual uh, tone of the guitar and how it's changing. Uh, we totally could add more delay and verb. But hey, I want to let you guys know something. I'm going to add all these effects to Tone Tools. You're going to be able to download those soon. But hope you learned something. 
The background track you just heard is I'm gonna we're gonna put that up too. So that's gonna be dropping very shortly, and uh, we're gonna have that because um, I've actually got a couple backing tracks that are that we're gonna start using some TJ stuff, and it's fun to play along with. So that is a great um, you know E major kind of thing. One flat seven. Uh, five, four kind of thing there. And, um, you know, it's really fun to play along with. So check that out. We're going to have some jam tracks coming up on the channel. You're going to be able to play along with that. In fact, I'll upload that uh, very, very, very soon. Try and get that up uh, today or tomorrow. And uh, you're going to be able to jam along with that. But that is how I approach rock lead sounds on the Kemper. Hope this has been helpful. Like, subscribe, if you get anything out of the Tone Junkie videos. Thank you so much. The 68 Pro Plexi, it's on the link down below. Uh, Tone Tool stuff is in the link down below. And... Uh, well, uh, that, that, that jam track's not out yet, but look out on the YouTube channel. My name is Ben H.W. H.W. And I'm the winner!